Time for a little coffee brewing there, my friends. Uh, welcome to yet another day <clears throat> here in uh, in the world. It is uh, Tuesday, November 23rd. Just looking at my uh, Word Among Us, and today I just, I'm just seeing this right now. Today is the Feast of what? St. Clement I, Pope and Martyr. And today, like I said, I'm going to share with you from the Word Among Us, and uh, I'm going to read from the Gospel of Luke this morning. Luke chapter 21. Well, some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings. Jesus said, all that you see here, uh, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he. The time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes famines, and plagues from place to place. And awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Gospel of Luke this morning, the gospel of our God. People who speculate uh, <clears throat> on when Jesus will return will often mention this particular passage. Uh, they'll remind us that our world has already seen nations warring uh, against one another, as well as great earthquakes and uh, severe famines. It's all going on right now. Um, they may also call attention to the plagues that are now on the rise. Just look around, right? Um, should we conclude uh, that these are sure signs that Jesus' return is just around the corner? Yeah, the fact is, we really, we really don't need to try to figure out when Jesus will come back. Not even Jesus himself will know the answer to that one. <clears throat> it's enough for us to know that he will come again. That's all we have to know. Even if we don't live to see a second coming, we know that he will come for each one of us at the end of our lives. That could happen any day, right? Yeah. The important issue is when Jesus is coming back, it's what we are doing to be ready for it. Uh, are you living as if you could return at any moment? Good question. If that question makes you a little uneasy, consider this. Jesus return means that you will see him, your Savior, the one who rescued you from sin and death. You'll behold the God uh, uh, who created you from nothing, who provided for all your needs, and who cares for you at every second. You'll be before the one whose love for you is greater than you ever imagined while on earth. Think about these things. Your heart will be stirred with joy and eager expectation for that day. Remember how excited many of the early Christians were at the thought of Jesus' return. They couldn't wait to see him. They were freed from anxiety as they waited in joyful hope. As we share that kind of attitude, uh, we will find it easier to live a life pleasing to the Lord. Love and gratitude, mm, not fear, is going to motivate our expect, expect, expectancy and strengthen us in hope. So the next time you hear of earthquakes, famines, and plagues, remember Jesus' promises. Look to the one who loves you and is waiting for you, the one who is coming to take you with him to his heavenly kingdom. Let him turn your unease into eagerness and pray, Lord Jesus, change my heart, make me ready to welcome you. And there you have it for today. Now, are you ready? Are you ready? You think you're ready. Ponder that today. Reflect on that today as you pray throughout your day. And like I said, start out today with thankfulness. First and foremost, uh, give thanks to the good Lord today. Okay, make it a great day. Pray for each other. And uh, give a word of encouragement and a smile away today. And know that God loves you. And so do I.